we saw how powerful the correlation coefficient r was and that it was able to tell us a whole bunch of information. It's able to tell us strength and direction. So we're going to have to be able to find this number, right? The answer is yes, but we're not going to do it by hand because that formula just looked atrocious, right? So we are going to use a computer or a calculator to do it. All right, let's see that in an example. So the table below shows the percent of students who receive free or reduced price lunches compared with the percent who pass the math portion of the state exam at public schools in Sandusky, Ohio. Sandusky, Ohio, the home of Cedar Point. Okay, so here's the percent of the students that need free or reduced lunch right, at different schools in that area. And here's the percent that pass the state math exam. So it's this big state exam that all students have to take. This is the percentage that pass the math portion of it. What is the sample size? Okay, so remember the samples is the schools, right? The schools themselves are that sample. So if I put over here school, we have school number one, school number two, three, four, five, There we go. So we have 13 schools total. Now the explanatory variable and the response variable. So you can imagine, well, what they want to know is they want to know what percentage of students are passing that math exam. That's what they really would like. So the response variable is right here. And the explanatory variable is right here. So in a way, I'm kind of doing it backwards. The response variable is the most important part. So that's the percent passing the state math exam. Um, and it's percent of that school, right, that passes the state math test. And then the explanatory variable would be the percent of that school um, that receive, uh, I'll just say percent on free or reduced lunch, percent of students on free reduced lunch. This is the percent of students that pass. Okay, now the fun part. We get to compute the correlation coefficient. All right, so first I'm going to show it to you in StatCrunch. Now, in StatCrunch, I have this data set already available for everybody to load up. So if you go to um, search data sets, and you look for free reduced lunch, there it is. Um, I didn't even have to type anything, but if you type, you know, MAT 133 lunch, it'll probably show up in your menu because it's a publicly available data set. And there we have the data. So we want to go to stat and we want to go to regression and we want to choose simple linear regression. Right, so that's the way we're going to do this. So stat Regression was the arrow I went over on, simple linear. And I click on that. And then X, it wants to know the explanatory variable, which was the percent on free reduced lunch. Y is the percent passing that math test. And we kind of don't have to worry about all of this stuff. <laughs> There's a lot of things going on here. This is actually that chapter 14 stuff that I told you about. Um, so just kind of ignore it. It, it isn't going to mean anything to you. It, it's all a little bit more advanced than we're going to cover. So we're just going to put in our x variable, our y variable, and scroll and just say compute. Now it's giving us a ton of information here, way more than we actually need, but the important part is right there, the R correlation coefficient. And again, most of this stuff down here, that's all having to do with chapter 14. Actually, this is chapter 13 right here and chapter 14 right there. So we're not going to worry about that. Um, we're, we are going to need a couple of these things, but right there, the correlation coefficient is negative 0.688. That's it. Now, in the calculator, you do the same kind of thing. So you go to Stat, you go to Edit, clear out any old columns, so go up and press Clear, Enter, and then you have to type in all the data. All right, so I'm going to pause this, you should too, and go type in the data if, the, if you want to follow along on the calculator. If not, then you can kind of skip ahead. The frustrating thing about the calculator is, of course, if you've typed something wrong, it hides it halfway through the screen, so it's a little bit annoying. So once you've got that data set in there under Stat Edit, then you go back to Stat to Calculate, 
and you pick number four. It's linear regression. See how it says in, in the stat crunch output, simple linear regression? That's what we're doing, right? Linear regression. So if I click number four, linear regression, it wants to know what the X and the Y are as well. So my X um, list was in L1, my Y list was L2, so this is all good. No frequency list. We only use frequency list in section 3.3 and section 6.1, and that's it. And there it is, the bottom number, R equals negative 0.6878, right? Just like um, StatCrunch came up with. Okay, so one way or another, write down some instructions for yourself, but you'll know that R is negative 0.688. We tend to round to three or four decimal places. Remember, it has no units. So I'll make um, a couple little statements here. Sorry, I'm just choosing a color here. <laughs> All right, so in stat crunch, you enter your data, and then you went to stat, then regression, and then you chose simple linear regression. We're going to need this for the rest of the chapter, so you might as well get used to it. right? In the TI-84, if that's the way you want to go, um, you have to enter your data first, of course. The same thing with StatCrunch. I just happen to have this data available, but otherwise you'd have to enter it yourself. And then you go to Stat, then you move to Calc, you choose number four, which is LinReg, and then you run through all of that, and you'll come up with the answers. Oh, one other comment really quickly. If you did that and it didn't come up with it for you, I completely forgot about this, you have to go to Mode, and down at the bottom of Mode, you see where it says Stat Diagnostics? On. You have to make sure that that is on. You have to press Enter on it so it's nice and dark. That's how it will come up with the Stat calculate the R values. So when I run this, it actually runs that and finds those R values. So if it didn't automatically for you at first, go to mode, turn stat diagnostics on. You want that on for the whole course and then it will run it. Then it will tell you R squared and R. Sorry, I forgot about that. So there they are. Um, and again, once you do that once, you should never need to do it again. So just go through it now, go to mode and turn stat diagnostics on, and then that'll be on for the rest of the time in the class. All right, now what relationship do we see here? Well, that's a negative relationship, right? Now, how negative? Well, let's go back to the number line. Negative 0.688. So here's negative 0.5, here's negative 0.8. So negative 0.6 and negative 0.7 are in here. So negative 0.688 is actually almost in the middle, right? Okay, so negative 0.688 is in here. It's in the moderate negative zone. All right, so it's a moderate negative relationship. Now think about what that means. That means that as your free reduced lunch goes up, right, as free or reduced lunch, that's your X, Right? As you increase your free and reduced lunch percentage, I guess I could put a little percent sign there, the percent that pass the math test goes down. Now, why would this be an observational study, not an experiment? Right? We're testing people, right? Yeah, but that, that's okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter that we're testing people. What's not happening is you're not randomly assigning free reduced lunch to people. You're not manipulating this X variable. It would be unethical to randomly assign free reduced lunch to people. Think about what that would mean. You would be saying, you, you randomly get lunch. I don't need lunch. No, you're getting it, right? And you, I'm not letting you have free reduced lunch. You have to pay for it. But if they're poor and they really need the free reduced lunch, they're not getting it, right? It would be unethical to do that, right? You cannot randomly assign free reduced lunch, but that's what it would take to be an experiment.
An experiment is when the researchers manipulate the x variable to see if they can um, find differences and changes in the y variable. This would be a case where it is completely unethical. You cannot randomly take away free reduced lunch from kids that need it, nor can you randomly assign it to people that don't need it. Right? Both of those are kind of bad, right? especially the former. All right, so all this is dancing around something else. There's something else going on here. So you can see from the relationship that we said, as free reduced lunch goes up, math test goes down. Matter of fact, I can draw a little graph of that. I think I will. So if you look at the moderate negative relationship, here's your free reduced lunch, percent on free lunch. I'll just kind of, and here's your percent passing the math test. Okay. And we just said, as free reduced lunch goes up, so as you move to the right, it's going like that. I mean, granted it's not perfect. <laughs> I'm just kind of winging it here. Okay, so why can't I say then that, hey, free reduced lunch is causing lower math scores, right? That's the question. So why is it not possible, not possible, to argue that free reduced lunch is causing lower in math scores? Ah, because of section 1.2, correlation is not causation. Because of lurking variables. All right, so correlation is not causation in an observational study, which this is. Right? Correlation is not causation in an observational study because of lurking variables, such as, all right, now there's something else going on here. There's something else that could be affecting what's happening. Something else that could affect whether students can pass a math test and whether they are on free reduced lunch. And it probably is affecting various other things as well. Now there's several candidates for this, but I think the biggest one would be poverty right, income. If you have a lot of students on free reduced lunch, that means generally you have a lower income level. Lower income levels tend to be tied to lower math scores for a wide variety of reasons, right? Stress, um, sleep quality, parents can't be as involved as they would like, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So poverty or income level, those are both some big ones in this particular, right? Your income level affects both of these things, or your poverty level, same token. 